Hey y'all, Irix guy here, and I'm going to test a new, uh, well it's not new, but it's a feature that I haven't tested yet with the Phantom 4, and that's the orbit feature. So I'm going to stand out in the middle of the field, and the Phantom 4 should orbit me in a 360 degree pattern. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is pull out my anemometer. I'm going to check the wind speed. Something I always try to do. I've forgotten my anemometer at times. The other one I had actually it died, so I had to get uh, had to get this one. You may have seen the one that I had that was yellow. Well, this one right here is the uh, is the new one I got. So let's hold it. You know, always where the wind is coming from. And right now we've got about 2.1, 2.3, 2.1, 1 1.3. So burst up to about 2.3 knots of wind. So nothing too intense. Uh, let's go ahead and get airborne here. I've got the, uh, the Phantom 4 ready to go. Format my micro SD card to make sure I have enough room. Filming in 4K, 30 frames per second. If you watch my channel, you know that all my fresh content is 4K Ultra HD. So something I try to do to better future-proof my content. I realize that 4K is still catching on by a lot of people, but it will, in my opinion, quickly start to replace 1080p. So let's hit record and let's get airborne here. And then we'll initiate the, uh, the orbit feature. take it up to a safe and responsible altitude and then I'm, I'm going to kind of walk out in the field here. What I'm doing now in my app is I'm going to uh, Looks like the controller icon at the left, and then there's an option that says Intelligent. So I click Intelligent. And then I'm going to select Point of Interest. It says Fly Aircraft Above the Subject of Interest and Set Point as Point of Interest. So I'm going to walk out here, I'm going to set that when I'm standing under the drone.
one thing you'll notice there is that I wasn't in the uh, the camera's field of view. So to recap what I did, I set the point of interest, which is when the drone is directly over the object. In this case, it was me. I was functioning as the object. And then using the right stick, I determined the, uh, the radius of the rotation. So that's a matter of, you know, once you've established a step one, the point of interest, you know, with the drone directly over whatever that point is, after setting that, step two is when you set your radius using the right stick. And that's where I defined how many meters I wanted the drone to orbit that point of interest. So if you want it to be closer to the point or further away, depending upon what you're filming. What I failed to do is gimbal wheel speed or gimbal wheel down to get the point of interest, me, in the frame. So we're gonna do this again. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the camera's field of view before I initiate the, uh, the orbit. Now what I've done is replaced the point of interest just so you can see that that it's following a point that was established on the ground versus a controller. So now you'll see that it's rotating or it's orbiting rather that uh, what I like to refer to as the glorified stake case. You know that the case that the Phantom 4 uh, comes in. So to continue to do this, one thing that's cool you can do, you can manipulate the speed of the rotation and also whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise because depending upon what you're filming, what the point of interest is, you may want to rotate one direction or the other. So let's play with that first. Let's keep the counterclockwise and instead of rotating at one meter per second, let's speed it up. Let's see how fast this thing can go. So now I'm at 5.1 meters per second. You're gonna notice it's, it's dramatically faster. Uh, something I'll probably do when I use this feature in the field is, is, uh, is go slow because I can always speed things up within post-production. 
you know, I can retime that video. And obviously a video that's been filmed at a, at a slower speed is often going to look better uh, when it's uh, sped up because it was, it was originally captured at a, at a slower spi flight speed. So now let's take it and let's switch to clockwise rotation. I'm just gonna drag this over and I'm at 0.8 meters per second. So really slow at this point. But see, now it's, it's rotating in a uh, clockwise fashion versus the, uh, versus the counterclockwise fashion like we originally had. And actually within the app, it's funny, it doesn't call it counterclockwise, it calls it anti-clockwise, which yeah, is pretty interesting. Okay, so now I'm gonna speed it up in the clockwise rotation. So that's your top speed there, 5.2 meters per second in clockwise. But what was cool, you notice I did not have to reset my point of interest. Now this, I can see this as being useful for a variety of, of filming scenarios. I'm gonna slow it, slow it down a little bit. Um, that's 1.9 meters per second. But I can see it being useful for a variety of, of filming uh, scenarios, especially if, uh, well, I mean, obviously you wanna make sure that what you're, what you're orbiting is a fixed point because if it's moving that that could potentially be more challenging unless it's moving at a very slow rate of speed then what you might be able to do say there's a canoe or a, or a sailboat or something that's, that's moving very slowly what you may be able to do in that scenario is get a really big radius and continue to orbit even though that object is in motion continue to orbit but still capture everything uh, you know before it gets out of the frame Curiously enough, I'm getting the battery cell damage error message again. You may have watched one of my previous videos where I mentioned I encountered a battery cell damaged error, uh, yet there seemed to be no problems present. So I'm getting that again. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on uh, I'm gonna continue my rotation here. But I'm gonna click on battery cell damaged, and it says stop using battery and contact support battery cell broken so you know that's that's one of my you know a lot of people accuse me of being a DJI DJI fanboy and as I've mentioned over and over if you subscribe to my channel and watch my videos youtube.com forward slash irix guy um, you'll know that uh, that there's a lot of DJI things I don't like I'd I have no desire, no interest whatsoever in, in the Inspire. And you can check out my video where I flew one. Bar to friends, and I was just not, I was not happy with it. It's too big, it's too heavy. Some other things with DJI, and I mean, these, these field tests, I never know, I never know what's gonna happen. I mean, this is not scripted. Uh, so it's, it's moments like this. Now I'm gonna hit pause. You'll well, see, I actually paused the, uh, the point of interest so now it's just hovering right there uh, but I, I never know what's going to happen obviously I do know that I'm in a safe and responsible location and that should there be a catastrophic failure that everything's going to be okay but I never know what's going to happen so when I see error messages like this you know I don't look at it as a um, as a problem I look at it as a troubleshooting opportunity because as early adopters of drones as I mentioned over and over if you watch my previous videos as early adopters of drones, we're provided with the opportunity to explore troubleshooting challenges that down the road likely won't exist. Think about when uh, computers first came out. If you ever built your own computer, you had to troubleshoot IRQs and DMA, DMAs on the various boards before, there had, uh, before they had the technology called plug and play, where you simply inserted a card and, and Windows operating system picked it up. If you ever dealt with the uh, with the early days of building your own computers, you, you got to uh, experience troubleshooting that people that are, uh, that are born in today's generation will likely never experience because the technology has evolved so much that troubleshooting is somewhat non -ex less existent, I should say. And the troubleshooting that is there is, is a different type of troubleshooting. It's not as, it's not as uh, painful. And it's that painful troubleshooting that we're seeing now with drones because we are early adopters. And the, the technologies, although awesome, 
The technologies are not yet refined. We're still in the infancy. The bag cell phone days of drones, as I mentioned over and over. So I'm at 45% battery life remaining. Still got the battery cell damage there, uh, but everything seems to be okay. What I'm gonna do now is switch to, we're gonna imagine that I'm a sailboat, and I'm gonna switch to a wider, uh, a wider point of entry. So I'm gonna set another point out here. Hey all I Rick Scott here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm an independent channel and it's viewers like you that help me to continue to grow. I appreciate your viewership and y'all have a good day.